Hi, and welcome to this 4NAV coffee break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at 4NAV, and I will be your presenter today. As this coffee break is live, you can ask your questions via the GoToWebinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the coffee break. Today, we're going to merge data from multiple sources in your Business Central reports. When we create reports, it may happen that you need to place information from several tables in the same section. This is not a big problem when it's just a single record. With 4NAV you can simply add a record and get the data. It gets trickier when we need to place data from multiple data items with multiple records in the same text box. Let's consider this scenario. Your client needs you to place text from the sales comment lines in line with the actual sales line data. To demonstrate merging data from multiple sources, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will join several strings from the sales line table. In step three, I will add a data item and place its data in a variable. In step four, I will merge that information with the sales line. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will merge data in the Business Central SaaS tenant with the Business Central 2022 wave one release. I've installed the 4NAV customizable report pack and I've executed a step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is also available on the Business Central on-premise environment. I also have the 4NAV designer installed on my PC. The 4NAV designer can be downloaded from the 4NAV website. The first thing we need to do is di to display multiple fields in a the first thing we need to do is to display multiple fields in our description text box. We will use the join strings function to do this. We've discussed the join strings function in an earlier coffee break, so I won't discuss it in depth today. So what we're going to do is we'll have a look inside Business Central, because obviously I've prepped something for us to play with today. I have a sales order, and the sales order has a bunch of information that many sales orders have, but we have also added some sales comment lines. So on the first line uh, I've got two comments and on the second line I have a single comment right there and I want to merge those inside a lot of text from our uh, from our sales order. Now you will notice that this sales order has two descriptions so first of all I want to display both of those descriptions and a couple of other things. So to do that obviously I can open my 4NAV reports and I will edit my standard order today. And obviously this will work on any 4NAV report. I usually use the sales documents because those are used widely and they're nice to play with uh, because everybody knows how they work. So um, first thing we will do, like I said, is use join strings to uh, add string a bunch of fields together in the description field. So I am just going to unhook this section from its master and grab the, uh, the description source expression. Now you will notice it just uses the uh, line.description at the moment. I want to join a few strings together. So I'll use the curry report join strings function and that join strings function as you can see here uses a separator and then a bunch of values and you can add as many values as you want as long as you add a separator first. Now as a separator I'm going to use backslash n because backslash n inside JavaScript is going to give us a new line. So this uh, join strings function will, jo will join a bunch of strings together all on a new line. So the first text box obviously is going to be the line description. Then we will grab the line description 2. Then I will use a line dot field extension and the field extensions inside for enough give us the uh, caption plus the value as long as there actually is a value inside the database. So this will give us the net weight caption plus the net weight and I will use another one uh, just for demo purposes. Also the field extensions dot plant delivery date. Let's format our document so everything gets formatted properly. 
makes everything a bit more readable. So I've got my code report and join strings right here. Now for join strings on multiple lines to work, obviously I need to have can grow set to true in my uh, both my text box, which the standard for nav reports have, and also in my uh, sections. I have a section I've just unhooked from the master, uh, but the master section actually has the uh, can grow set to true, so this should work for us. There we go, scroll down a bit. You will notice right now I've got my Athens mobile base for basing and I've got my net weight and I've got my planned delivery date. So that's step one. Let's move over to step two. So the second thing we need to do is to get the data item for the record we want to get data from. In this case, that's going to be the sales comment line. We will store the data we want to display inside the JavaScript variable so we can use it elsewhere. The best way to store information from multiple records is in an array of objects. So let's go back to our ForNav report. I'm going to grab a new data item, drop it on top of the line, and this is going to be my sales command line. And I'm going to set my data item link. Uh, this is a pretty simple link. I've got my number is connected to my document number and I have my document line number. It's going to be connected to my line number so I only get the comments for the specific line. And once I've done that I need to set one other filter. So I'm going to open my data item table view and set a WHERE clause which is going to be the document type I'm only interested in orders. So that's my sales command line. Now I'm going to quickly insert a section in here. And inside that section, I am going to grab my comment. I'll make this yellow so it stands out a bit. And let's preview and see if we get the comments now from, uh, from the database. I and mean, usually I'm not going to use this text box in the uh, in the end product, but it's a nice way of checking that I've got the data that I'm expecting. So I've got two comment lines for the first line and a single comment line for the second line. So that's step one for this part. Now I've got my data and now I've got my data, I can store it inside a variable. Uh, to store a data inside a variable, obviously I need to declare a variable first. So what I'm going to do is on the line, I have my on pre data item trigger. This is where I'm going to declare my variable. So I'm going to say for comments. And this just declares a new variable without a type or without any values or anything at all. It just says I got, I've got this, uh, this variable and I can do something with it. Now obviously this variable needs to be reset every time a line is read from the database because I don't want to get stuck with the uh, comments from the previous line. So I am going to say comments is an empty array. And I'm going to say an empty array instead of null uh, because if I have an empty array, I can push new objects into my array. So I've got that. So now I've got my, uh, my variable and now obviously I need to push data into it. Uh, so I'm going to go to my sales comment line on after get record trigger and in the on after get record trigger I can type really fast what I can do is uh, push a new object into my array so I get an array of JSON objects and that object is going to have a date which is going to be the sales comment line date and it's going to have a comment which is going to be the sales comment line comment you can build these uh, these objects yourself and you can use whatever fields from your source table you think are necessary so you can use as many or as few as possible as you want uh, you can even even add a single text variable inside your array so you'll have an array of text uh, that will work just as fine as well so i have this and now obviously i want to test it so in my text box right here, I'm going to 
use json.stringify and json.stringify is a standard javascript function that will stringify or make a string of any array or object inside your uh, inside your data set so i've got json stringify.comments and let's go and have a look what i've got now And again, this is not something you want in the finished product, but it's uh, it's a nice way of debugging and checking that you're actually getting the data that you were expecting. So right now for the first line, I've got a an array with a single object with my date and my comment. And on the second line, I've got two objects with the first comment and the second comment. Then for the second line, my array obviously gets reset because that's what I've programmed. And I've got a new array with my single comment line. So this is perfect. I can move over to the final step. Finally, we have all the data to place our comments inside our item text. So um, to do so, to, to merge these, uh, these comments, we need two techniques. First, we need to add an integer data item below the sales comment, da comment lines data item. We cannot simply place the data we've gathered from the sales comment line into the existing sales line body because the comment lines have not been read from the database when the normal line body is rendered. So we need to place these comments somewhere below the sales comment line. And secondly, uh, we can use JavaScript to select the object property to display for the entire array. So this is, it looks complicated, but it's actually fairly straightforward. So what I need to do is grab a new data item. And that data item is going to be the integer table. And the in integer table, uh, for those that don't know it, is a virtual table inside Business Central that will count from minus infinity to plus infinity or minus to, I don't know how many millions. It's not actually infinity, but it is a lot. And since we don't want to count into infinity, I just need a single record so I can place some data. I'm going to set my max iteration to one. If you fail to set your max iteration, for now we'll start at one because that's the default filter and it will count all the way to the end of, uh, uh, of the integer array, which is a 16 bit integer. It's a long way. So uh, that's my data item. Let's give it a name. So it's actually something that uh, that's somewhat memorable. So we'll call it line text. This line text obviously needs a body section because we want to place data there. And the body section we will call line text body. And the reason I use, uh, I don't use body too, but I call it line text body, is that if you want to use this inside a master section, for instance, you need a memorable section name so you actually know what you're talking about when you come to select your sections from your master report. So I've got that. Then I'm going to simply copy my normal line body set can grow on my new section and then I'm going to delete my normal body delete my comment body I'm going to make this body green so it stands out a little bit so we know what's going on and then finally we are going to use some uh, some JavaScript magic and this JavaScript magic is going to be right in here so below the line description 2 and above my field extensions net weight i'm going to use comments.map.join the comments.map uh, mapping of an array will map uh, the object inside uh, or the object val value inside my array into uh, into the one i want to use so i want to use the comments instead of the dates so uh, to grab the comments from my object I'm going to use map e becomes e dot comment. And then I'm going to use join, uh, which is a normal array function inside JavaScript. Again, with a backslash n, uh, join will join any value inside my array uh, with the uh, with the separator I specify here. So what this does is this grabs the comment from my comments of array of objects, and it will join them uh, with a new line character. Let's see if we can see this in action.
There we go, it looks promising. So what we've got right now is we ha we still have a one line per, uh, per sales line, uh, but that line will now display description one, description two, comment line one, comment line two, net weight and plant delivery date. So it merges data from multiple data items into a single text box ordered just the way I want it. And let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to place several fields in our description text box. We used join strings to place some sales line information on separate lines. The second thing we did was to add a sales comment line data item and store the data in a JavaScript array of objects. The third and final thing we did was to place a new, uh, was to place a new integer data item on our report and move our sales line body there. We used the JavaScript map and join functions to get and place our sales comment line data in, inside the existing body text. You can use this technique to place information from multiple data items inside a single text box uh, or just the way you like it. For instance, it's possible to join information from the sales line, assembly line, comment, lot and serial number and any other table into a single text box. Thank you for listening to me so far. Uh, I see we have no further questions, so we are going to wrap up this coffee break. If you want to know, if you want to know more about Fornav, or if you want to download the Fornav Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornav in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. And you can watch more videos about Fornav on our YouTube channel. If you have questions about Fornav, please email them to support at fornav.com. For a full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornav.coffeebreak. Thank you very much for uh, joining me today and I will see you in the next coffee break. Goodbye.